Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to uh, just oh, help you conceptually understand how circuits behave when we have capacitors involved. Right? So in this example we've got this circuit, it's got three resistors, a 3 ohmer, a 2 ohmer, I'm sorry, a 3 ohmer, a 1 ohmer, and a 2 ohmer hooked in the configuration shown with a 10 volt voltage source. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to calculate the charge on this capacitor as T goes to infinity, meaning like a long time uh, down the road after this switch is closed. So when the switch is closed and we think about what's going to happen, the, the voltage source here is going to start pushing charge through the circuit. So we're going to have a current. Right, the first one's right here. I'm going to call that one I1. Now that current is going to be good anywhere in this branch to that point. All right, right here, however, there's kind of a divvying taking place. We're going to have a current. Whoops, I'll go back and make those black again. We're going to have a current here. I'm going to give that a name I2. And we're also going to have a current here. And I'm going to give that a name I3. Now it's something that you know something that's very important to realize is that I1. 2 and 3 are all time dependent. They're all going to vary with time. And the reason is because the capacitor here is going to charge up more and more and more. It's going to start affecting the circuit. Now, as far as getting the time dependent information, that takes quite a bit of math. Uh, that takes some uh, integral calculus and it takes uh, a bit it, it takes a bit more math than the intention of this video is for. We're just going to talk about conceptually what's going to happen. So the current I2 here is going to charge this this capacitor to this charge configuration plus minus. That charge also is going to be time dependent. But this capacitor is eventually going to fully charge. Once that capacitor fully charges, once Q hits its maximum value, once this is equal, I'm going to put Q max here, then the current I2 must go to zero. When that happens, once the current I2 is zero, I3 and I1 are now equal. Right? And now I can write one single loop and solve this. I can write a loop that looks like this and solve for the current I1, keeping in mind that I2 and I3 would, would therefore be equal. Again, a long time down the road, once the capacitor is fully charged. So if I start here, and I'm going to go around the loop clockwise. We're going to have plus 10 volts minus 2I1 as we come across this resistor. As we move down here, we are going to drop in potential by an amount 3I3. I'm going to go ahead and put I3 for just a moment. All right, so we're going to have minus 3I3. Right, then we're back to uh, where we started, so the sum equals 0. And now in the next line, I'm just going to take into account this fact that at, as, as uh, time gets really large, these currents become the same. So this is now going to read 10 volts minus, now this is 2I1 minus 3 times I1, that's minus 5I1 equals 0. So our current I1 is going to equal 2 amps. Now, I'm going to figure out what has that told us. Well, we know the current and therefore we know basically everything there is to know about the voltage in the outer loop here. In order to find the charge on the capacitor, we're going to need the voltage across the capacitor. Right? We need the voltage across here. So now that voltage is important, I'm going to go ahead and color code like I normally do with potentials. So this is all going to be one potential to here, but the potential is going to drop across that resistor. Right? We're going to have a new potential. That's going to be good to here. Again, that's all conducting material. It's going to be good to this point. We're now going to have a drop in potential across the 3 ohm resistor. So we've got a new potential here. And again, this is all conducting material up to this point here. Now, I'm going to kind of inspect this here and think about what's happening there. It's not conducting material if there's a resistor there. However, there's no current in that resistor. If there's no current through a resistor, and you kind of inspect Ohm's law, all right, V equals IR. If this is zero, then this also is zero. 
therefore there's no voltage drop across that resistor which means this is good news for us that this green line can in fact go right across that resistor and onto that capacitor so what we're looking for is the voltage across the capacitor which in my picture is represented by the green to yellow uh, color change I'm just going to take notice that that's the same right there green to yellow and the voltage across uh, this resistor is very easily calculated by Ohm's law IR and the I we know to be 2 amps and the resistance is 3 ohms so the potential is 6 volts so now we know the potential difference between green and yellow is 6 volts and as we inspect our circuit and I look at the capacitor green yellow so now we know there's a 6 volt potential across the capacitor All right for capacitors we know that capacitance is equal to charge over voltage it's really easy to rearrange that so the charge on the capacitor which is going to equal now the maximum charge on the capacitor is equal to um, capacitance times the voltage the capacitance is 20 microfarads the voltage is 6 volts and what we have is 120 microcoulombs right I hope that this helped uh, demonstrate these concepts have a great day